But it has to have good integrity. You got any holes here, you're a submarine. <laughs> a submarine car. I'm sure someone's done one. So here we are, we can see the underneath of it. So you can see this sort of sculpted area here, and this is where we've got our propellers. What's the most important thing with an amphibious car? Put the plug in. So that's your plug there. When you come out of the water, you take your plug out and it drains anything that's in the bilge. You also drain the oil out through there. You see, that's, that's the, the hole to take the oil out. But obviously you've got to remember to put it in when you go in the water. If you don't, you'll be a submarine. Um, got a bit of pond weed here, so that proves it's been used. But you've got pond weed and we've got fresh grease from where, you know, we've, I keep it very well greased up. You know, we've been putting, I've put wheel bearings in the past. So that's, that's your drive shafts there going up into that tunnel area, which we looked at inside the car. We can look at that and in detail another time because we'll do a maintenance video next. But yeah, and you see it's all flat under here, all flat bottomed. And then we find some more pond weed. So again, proof it's been in the water. Front suspension, as I say, this is unique to the Amphicar. Uh, now, we've got coil over struts on here, um, and then we've got this sort of axle affair here. Now, I don't know if they ever had a torsion bar on them, because from all the time I've worked on it, it's got these, it's had these, these um, type of coil overs on it, but it might be that originally they were torsion bar, because that looks very VW torsion bar, doesn't it? Um, and then we've got these little tie rods here to sort of the articulation, so it's like a sort of four link affair. Drum brakes all round. They, when you go in the water, are obviously immersed in the water. And as I say, this, is, this becomes your rudder. You're actually turning, the, this, by turning this, the steering wheel, you're actually, by the positioning these, they are like rudders. So that's that. Uh, what you have to remember is when you leave the water, that your brakes drums are full of water and are all wet and horrible. So you have to use them gingerly and clean them by a few applications to warm them up and get them dry before you go hammering off home in it. But you know, that's the thing that can be done. You just have to remember it. Steering box is inboard, so you have a seal around here, you know, so everything has to be sealed that's in the water, but all of this is immersed in water. All this gets, you know, the water on it. And we've got a sort of tow hitch on the front here. You know, if it needs to be dragged out of the water, they can use that to pull you up the slipway. So that's it. So it's actually very simple under here. There's not a lot to see, you know, but it has to have good integrity. You got any holes here, you're a submarine. <laughs> and you're swimming home. I think we'll have a, we'll have a, a second video, if you'd like, of, of how to service your Amphicar. So when it comes to the servicing, it's reasonably simple, but what we have to make sure we're, we're, we're aware of is anywhere in the, aware of where. Yeah, then no, we do. We have to be aware of anywhere in the steering suspension, because obviously with it being immersed in water, it will, it will have problems there if you have anything. Let the suspension drop down and then we should be able to test the ball joints in the conventional way, just like you test anything else. So usual thing, I want to see if we can feel any play anywhere. We obviously got a bit of play in that. There you go, look. We've got play in the wheel bearing, we think. Uh, let's spin it and see what it sounds like. How noisy that wheel bearing is. Why do you think that's so noisy? Because it's been full of water, hasn't it? So we use special grease on these that's water resistant and that's what we use throughout but unfortunately you still get water ingress in there so unless you take them apart every time you go in the water pretty much every year we're putting wheel bearings in it we can't really seem to get beyond that these are dear aren't they look amphicar hubcaps isn't that lovely they're proper ones but yeah you can still get them apparently it still does them they've still got some spare ones so yeah so we we, we checked our wheel bearing we check our ball joints by doing the same sort of thing, but we've got so much play in things, I'm gonna have to have a, a bit better look than this. Um, I think with them wheel bearings like that, it's given me a false reading. 
Well, until I get that wheel bearing tightened up, I'm going to struggle to know by what's going on. But you know, she's got plenty of grease about. As you can see, it's not blood, it's grease. It's not jam either. <laughs> so the idea of this was that we could, we could leave her up and down and see what other play we've got in it. But as I say, we've got so much movement in that wheel bearing that I'm not going to get a proper reading. So if we look here, got playing the kingpins, push a bit harder. We've got playing this knuckle as well here. So we, we're gonna have, gonna have to have a bit of a look at this. We've also got playing this bush here. In here. So we've definitely got a bit of wear in it. There I was thinking a quick grease up. <laughs> we're gonna be on the phone to California, aren't we? Go. I'm just going to pop this off so we can see what's going on, a better look of how, the, how it all works. <laughs> right. I'm not going to get into it too much, but really what we're doing here is showing you this. So, so how this is, is the hole, you see? You see it's all sealed in. You know, none of this is... Um, it's all outboard, isn't it, of the car? So this is the hole, and that's why you have this curve back here, and then you've got these shapes here. You know, this is what I was saying about. So it's conventional drum brakes, nothing really to see there. Swing axle, what we said. We've got some play in here. Got some pond weed, what we thought, and he's had these lovely coilovers made for it. What we'll have to do now is a quick look at the back. So, so we've got work. We're gonna have to be doing some stuff in here. We'll, we'll come back to that. I'm gonna pop this back on, and then we'll get the back wheel off really to show you what goes on with the rear suspension and so on. So it's a very robust thing, you know, it's, um, which it needs to be for, you know, for, for what it's, you know, for what it's used for. So much the same as the front, we're just checking for wear in the wheel bearings. No wear in the wheel bearings, we've got the handbrake on, it's holding them tight. Let's take the handbrake off. We won't be able to test for wear if we've got the handbrake on, will we? So just as the front, checking for wearing the bearing, feels like we got a bit. We might be rubbing on the handbrake a bit there. Right. Just giving us that noise. So. Definitely got play there, haven't we? What's going on here? Let's have a look and see what we can see behind here. Is that in the wheel bearing? Or have we got some on the actual axle itself? I think that's all in the wheel bearing. Lever under it. I suspect most of that's in the wheel bearing. Yeah, well, I think that's mainly in the wheel bearing. Right, well, let's get this off, the wheel off. <coughs> Hubcaps. Now, I've had all these hubs apart before. We had to have a hub puller made for them. That was over a decade ago, when I was at the old place. Could be, it is due some rear wheel bearings. So it's not going to be the mileage, and it's not going to be the nautical mileage. <laughs> it's actually it is the nautical mileage, it's the wet. The wet gets in it and it ruins it. So that will be what's happened. Right, okay, so that's that off. Now, what we're looking at here, so we've got handbrake cable, conventional, sort of sealed here. Brakes coming out to it here, a flexi hose. A coilover shock absorber, much like we said before. And then we've got greasing points. So we've got 14 greasing points on these cars. But that's what we'll be doing is greasing things. But to be honest, we've got to replace some things as well to grease them. So you've got grease point there. And then in here, when we looked in the other video, we were looking at this tube, weren't we, that was inside the engine bay. 
and that's where your drive shaft travels through. And at the top of that tube, right up the end of it, is that rubber bellows. And inside that rubber bellows, if I turn the, the over, you see we've got a UJ, universal joint. See the grease nipples on it? We need to grease that up. Now that's often forgotten by people because they don't realise you've got to get up in there. So you've got to make sure that's greased. Well, that's quite nicely greased. You know, we've rebuilt all these shafts in the past. So that's that one. And if you go around the back, if you look in from the back, you'll see the other grease points. But yeah, so on here, we've got, we've got a grease point here for the sliding knuckle. That's, that's the sliding joint, which allows the drive shaft to articulate. And then in here, we've got a grease nipple for this universal joint there as well. And then we've got a grease nipple here, which is for these rear wheel bearings, which as I say, seem to be a bit, seem to have a bit of play in them. And that's it, but you know, this is my explanation of how, you know, the water goes all inside the brakes. All this is immersed in water. So this is why we use this special grease on them. But even doing that, you have problems. Now you're supposed to fully grease the car after every immersion in water, which obviously doesn't always happen, I'm assuming. Now you've also got some grease points on here. So we've got two grease nipples here on this shaft because we've got bearings in here, which again, now I've had all of this apart in the past and I've greased these up. So all this has been off. The, a, a few years ago, I took all this off and I rebuilt this with new bearings, seals and so on. And then we keep it wedged full of grease. And that's why this, you know, sealed it here onto the body there. And this is again, on servicing, my other job is to make sure that there's paint on everything, you know. So if I see any little areas that are bare metal, I paint them. Talked about the plug. That's the plug, I've just put it in just so we can see. So you, you, don't, you don't drive around with the plug in, you, you remove it every time you come out the water. But I just thought I'd show you what it looked like. And we're gonna do an oil change. So of course you can't change the oil with that in there. Because as I said, it's, it's, it comes out through the bilge effectively. So there you go, plugs out. And then we can see in here, that's the oil drain bung. So if we undo that, yeah, the oil will come out here, but it does tend to sort of sink back into here and then roll down into the bilge. So what I normally do is put a bit of card in here and that allows it to sort of scoop it out. So we'll do that, we'll do that in a minute. We don't want to lose that, that's our plug. But it is just like, just like the sort of plug you have in the bath, isn't it? So yeah. But that's never in the car, apart from when you're in the water. And if it's not in, before you go in the water, as I say, you'll be a submarine. So, so that's a 3 8 hex head. So we can use one of these. Well, obviously we can't use the male end. We've got to use the female end. So if we pop that on there, something like that. There you go. We can use that to drive it to undo it. And then I've got these little drivers, which is actually for, um, for using for tap and die sets and things. So I can, I can use that to turn it with. So it'd be as simple as that. If I just give it a bit, there you go, there you go, that's it. But what I'll do, I've got to get the drain bung. I've got to get, uh, sorry, I've got to get a drainer to drain it into, and I say, I want a bit of card or something to help scoop. What I really should do is fashion a proper sort of funnel for it. Um, having been changing the oil on it for 20 years now, you think I'd have got around and making something a bit more <laughs> permanent than a bit of old cardboard, but there we are. Right. That'll help. We still are mopping some up in the bilge, but that will help. And that's the thing, to get less in there. As I say, otherwise you end up mucking around having to clean it all up and it's not very pleasant. But as you can see, this isn't like the normal underside of a normal car, is it? You know, you, you, you see the engine there and the sump, wouldn't you? Wouldn't be like this. So it's a bit of an odd way of doing things. What I'll do now, I'll let the ramp down. Whilst that's draining, that'll go into our drain bowl and then we can get to the oil filter and so on and you know, mop up whatever we need to mop up uh, before we put the bung back in. But yeah, let's, let's let it down so we can get to the oil filter. I don't want to let the ramp down onto the oil drain bowl, otherwise it will crush it and we'll have oil everywhere. 
But if I let it down to, to about the right level, it should be fine. I can just climb up to do it. Or it might miss it if we're careful. It depends how well we've placed it. What I should have is some lines, isn't it, on the floor. If I put some lines on the floor, I'd be able to put place things in the right place, wouldn't I? I know the ramp won't hit it. I think we'll be all right. So now you've got to sort of climb into the bilge to do the next bit, which is a bit awkward. So if we look down in here, here's our oil filter. We want to get that off, but you can't really see what I was on about down, you know, the bilge is right down in there. You see what I mean? So if you, if you get loads of oil in there, it's just floating about, it's horrible. So we need to avoid that. You know, we, we will spill some, you know, they'll have some oil in it, which will spill. So what we'll do is if we put a load of this, this rag down in there, a load of this paper towel, try and catch as much of it as we can. And so just try to avoid having too much hanging around, you know, down in the bilge, because we can't, it's, it's difficult to mop it up to get to it. And you just don't want it there all smelly and horrible, do you? Um, so there we are. to get an old foot or strap for that. It's awkward because you've got to climb over these wings, you see, those big fins, you've got to sort of climb over them to get to anything, which does make life rather awkward. Right, let's see if we can get this one on there. are caught as much as we can so that's our little oil filter Got a little borg and beck on there but anyway that's it so um, we'll catch as much oil as we can and then we'll put a new one on right so here we can see we've got this oil filter sandwich here so so see these are the takeoffs to the oil cooler so they, they basically this is effectively a sandwich plate that bolts on and then you can have a spin on or, or, or you know, modern style oil filter on it. Or, or, or originally, these would have a little big oil canister thing. So you'd take all the, the can off and it'd have a paper element in it. But this is this has had this conversion done, um, partly because it's got the oil cooler on it. Now, I don't know if it's a factory thing having an oil cooler on one of these or not. Um, I would suggest it was because you would, you'd want oil cooling because you've got no airflow, have you? underneath here, you know, imagine the sump's normally in the wind effectively, isn't it, in a normal car, whereas on this it's not. So I think it is a factory thing. Uh, whether it's a factory thing to have a modern oil filter on there, I don't know. So there's our new oil filter. And all we've got to do is screw that on. But what we always do, you might, which is a good tip, is you always put some grease around here or a bit of oil because that's when these, these grow on. So you put that on dry, that will grow onto there and bond onto it and it'll be really difficult to undo. So always put a smear of grease around there or, or as I say, a little bit of oil out of an oil can, that type of thing. So I'll just put a bit of oil on it. I'll show you what I mean. You, know, you don't need much, just enough to sort of, um, you know, only wants a little bit, but enough so it sort of stays wet, you know, you, but not so much that it's dripping everywhere. That'll do. Obviously, you can just spin it, spin it around with your finger. That's the grease would do, but I just use oil because it's to hand, really. There you go, we just spin that up like that. And that's done. So that's that bit. And now we can put our sump plug back in to do that up. So we'll go back up in the air, we'll do that. Now, what I've just said about, that applies for any car with an oil filter, that, you know, modern or classic, anything. So it's the same job, usual thing, we're just putting this back in. But what we look at here is, this is what we put in. Now, what's that? That's not a washer, that's some old sealant, basically a bit of silicon sealant. So what we do, so we have a proper look at this thing, see what we're talking about. So there, there's, our, there's our sump plug. And this is the, um, what I said about the drive. You see, that's the square drive on it. I was saying about, so that you can use one of those on it. 
But what I always do is I put a bit of silicon sealant around it. Now, it doesn't matter if I'm using a washer or one of these. This is a taper, so this will be slightly tapered. So that will sort of eventually go up, go up tight. It will be, you know, it's thinner this end and thicker there. So as it winds in, that will tighten up. But it, you can still get it getting past the threads a bit. You know, I have had that. And, and as I say, even if you're using a washer, if it's a standard one with a washer, I always put a bit of sealant around there just to make sure it doesn't leak because there's nothing is sort of more annoying than, you know, just changing the oil on someone's car and then they come back the next day and say, oh, it's been leaving spots of oil on the driveway. Well, <laughs> this won't because it will go in the bilge, won't it? We won't know. But, you know, on a lot of cars it does. Um, now, obviously, on a lot of old cars, you leave spots of, on the driveway anyway because it leaks from various other places, but you don't want to add an extra one into it, do you? You don't want to be your fault that it's leaking. So that's the way I do it. But on a, on a modern car, you seldom have oil leaks unless you've got an actual problem. So you don't want to be the one that's you know, caused a problem since you serviced it, now it leaks. So yeah, just to smear the sort of, um, this type of silicon type sealant, you know, any, anyone will do and it doesn't matter what color. I usually use black because it looks less unsightly down there, doesn't it? You know, than, than some sort of lurid colored stuff. So that's that. So we'll take our little thing out, our little... And hopefully we haven't ended up with too much in the bilge, but you know, obviously it could have had some. So there we go, there's our little plug. We've got to get it in there, haven't we? So it's a bit, bit awkward because it's a bit blind, isn't it? You can see, I can't. Now we don't put the plug back in, we put that back in the glove box where it lives. That, the, the, as in the, the um, plug that seals it for when it goes in the water. I only had that in there just to show you what it looks like. Well that's that. Right, a little funnel in there. Right, so some old engines are slower fillers than others. Um, what you want is to allow it to breathe whilst you're doing it. So you want to take the dipstick out. Now we'll be needing the dipstick out to check the level anyway, won't we? But if we take it out, it'll allow the, it breathes. So what it means is as the oil goes down into the sump, it'll allow the, oil, the air to be, you know, for it, to dis, it will displace the air and then it'll, it'll, come, it'll come out the dipstick tube, the air, rather than if you're not, you tend to get the oil glugging and trying to push back out the top of the rocker box and sort of popping back through. Um, now, best laid plans, I don't know where the, old, where the old dipstick is on one of these, can't remember. Well, that doesn't make any sense, does it? Why can't I see it? Now, you'd have thought, having me going wobbling on about doing this for 20 years, I'd know where the dipstick is, wouldn't you? But I must admit, I work on a few different cars. There it is, it's hiding over here. That's why we can't see it. Looking in the wrong place, aren't we? You'll have to come round here and look where I was. There it is, that's the one, isn't it? There you go. Hiding down there. So that's why I couldn't see it. Now, I use the old Comma Classic in this because it's good oil. It'll probably be about three litres, I'd have thought, on a little thing like this, something like that. That's the stuff I use. Use this in everything, it's brilliant. Yeah, I don't like these thin exotic oils, you know, for modern cars. They're no good in old cars. They tend to leak out everywhere or burn them. A lot of people put these very expensive synthetic oils in these cars, in um, particularly the Dinos and Maserati and stuff, and it's, it's no good for them. They weren't made for that. Never listed that type of stuff for them. And that's why it leaks everywhere and burns it. But this is the old green stuff, you know, they are the old Duckham's liquid engineering. I think it's the same stuff. I think they just, you know, bought it up. I don't know why it's green. <laughs> Maybe they dye it green. You see, this bonnet makes it awkward to get to where the dipstick is, doesn't it? Between that and then reaching over all this lot, it's very awkward. Um, but there we are. It's the nature of it, isn't it? Right, we've not got anything on it yet. You have to get a bit more in there. You 
you get about three litres in it and then we'll check it. Obviously if I bother to read up what the capacity is, I could put the right amount in it, couldn't I, in the first place? And then, then I'd know. But most things hold about three litres, three to four litres is the norm. You know, some things obviously are at six litres, but you know, you start, start with your three and then see, can't you? It's what well, you don't really want to overfill it, do you? That's when you have a problem. So we ain't going to want much more, are we? So that's your top, your upper level, that's your lower level. So we're not quite up to the lower level. So normally between them two, it's about half a litre is, is the norm between the two. So we'll put, put another half litre in it and try it. Yeah, we're about there. We'll give it a touch more. Now what you've got to bear in mind is that as we fill it up like this, as we put oil in it, we'll get it up to a good level. You've got to allow it to settle down into the sump because it's got to drain around through the engine. And then when we start it up, the oil filter will be dry. So it will need to fill the oil filter up. And of course that, whatever size oil filter, that will take that amount of oil capacity to fill it. So, you know, it might drop down a bit, the oil level afterwards. So if you, if you had a huge oil filter with a big sort of like, you know, quarter of a quarter liter of capacity or something, or, you know, or something like that, obviously it's going to drop down the level, isn't it? So that's something you've got to take into, bear into, a, you know, bear, into bear in mind that that might be the case. But yeah, that's about right. That's good, I can run it up on that. And then we can see what we've got, can't we? Yeah, I should remember how awkward that is to do. I've forgotten. <laughs> I must admit, we haven't changed the oil on it for a few years. Because if you can imagine, a lot of people ain't been doing much for a few years, have they? So it ain't been out. Actually, that's not strictly true. It did go out last year and do the Henley, Henry, Henley Regatta, which is what it does do. But, um, uh, but it, you know, it hadn't done any miles since before that because I did a big service on it before it all got laid up. And of course it hadn't been anywhere since then. No one had, had they? Yeah, sounds nice and the oil light's gone out. So that means we've got oil around the engine. So if I let that settle, then I can check the level on the dipstick and then that's done, isn't it? And then, you know, if it needs a little top up, just bring it up to level, that's fine, isn't it? So that's done, isn't it? So that's how you change your oil on your amphi car. There's a few other things to do on it, <laughs> but that's the first bit. It's bon voyage. Where should we sail off to?